that would result in which will uh, take further council action in higher increases in the water and electric utility rates. You know, Ostrig, uh, my observation of your question, on, on the one sense, in a bottom line sense, it doesn't, I mean, it's, it's sort of neutral, right? You take electrical out of the library's budget, well, we're still paying for it. Now it's in another budget. Right. And on the one hand, it's fair because, you know, it's, it's not something you have any control over necessarily. On the other hand, I'm just thinking aloud here, if you do take it out of their budget, Right now, if it's in your budget, you have an impetus or an incentive to do what you can to be more efficient in your use of your electrical. I, if it's I, taken out, exactly you might not. On that, we turned off all the baseboard electric heating in this cold weather. That's the and only, saved that's a, the only change saved a great I can deal. see us yeah. taking it out of their budget. <laughs> No well, no, it's, it's also, I thought it was outside yeah, part I thought of it was, the cap. I thought it was going to be outside the cap, too. You take it out of their... If it's coming yeah. out of the utility, it certainly sounds like... The, 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 all of the utilities, all of the expenses associated with the, with the library that are in their library budget are outside the cap. Okay. All, all of the utilities mm -hmm. that are elsewhere are inside the cap. So are you saying but, that... But, but if by shifting them all to the electric... Field, it would be you don't sh you don't shift it well the electric utility you, we're not shifting anything to the electric field budget really we would just not be, we would not be paying for them whatsoever I tell you what maybe this is something we should just consider at another time and place and see what the effect well, no, is it was brought up this afternoon mm -hmm. and that's why it's trying to be considered to try to help the library right. close the gap in what they're requesting and what they're trying to do to cut their budget and you know, if we're not doing it then, now, um, what are no, we going to do it? I mean, uh, yeah, we pre since it just came up this afternoon, is maybe um, between now and our next budget meeting. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I'm kind of speaking off the cuff analysis, myself, and I don't want to approach it that way. A better understanding. It doesn't help you for your trustee meeting next week, but it, mm -hmm. I don't think you really care about that. If it's it's going to help you, it could help you in the end. So, um, I think we're, you're you're absolutely right, Mr. Conley. I think we understand that. You know. I'm enough of a realist, though. I deal with what I've got, yeah. and we have to adjust it. But if there is an adjustment, we'll come back and deal with it again. And look, if there's a way we can address it to our satisfaction, part of the trustee meeting, well, yeah. fine, let's try to do that. Yeah, that, if that can be communicated, because I think, you know, well, I can do, we had that conversation a little earlier today, uh, you know, Mr. Calfit asked, he says, okay, what would you do? If that would happen, what would be the impact on the budget that you're looking in that last column? Well, I, my this is me, and I've not talked to any of the other trustees in any shape or form. I have discussed it with Nancy. I said the first order of business that I would do is bring the collection budget back up twenty-five thousand dollars. I said that needs to get up to a number. The very next thing is I want to pay a wage increase to our employees. And the number that I would throw out is 2%. Fine. I, I know you're, that's what you're using here. You know, it's not 4% of the general, but it's 2%. And Nancy, as I said, has agreed to forego her participation in that. Good, good model, Ray. Uh, the rest would then operate within the salary and fringe benefit area and we would then adjust the hours. Uh, I think the hours that were have proposed that you saw there, basically moving our starting hour from nine to 10, I think that's probably a good change. You know, that I think is manageable. Uh, what we would do is basically restore, hopefully Thursday, so it's equal to the rest of the earlier days in the week, so it would be a 10 to eight rather than a 10 to six. We. The last item that I would look at is to bring our Sunday schedule, which is now going to go from uh, mid-May to October, back to comparable to the school year. May, you know, to operate through the middle of June and then start again at, at, through the Labor Day holiday. That's kind of the sequence of what we would do. Does it mean that there would still be salary cuts with the employees? Yes, because even we'd still have a, a shortfall. 
hopefully in the long run, you know, through attrition, et cetera, that would be brought into balance, you know, but that would be, you know, the employee's choice. Is there a possibility of further cutting back your hours for two summer months, July and August? We, um, we talked about that a little bit, particularly, most particularly the Saturday hours, but in talking with the staff who works more frequently, um, you know, on those hours, they feel we're busy enough and we're already closed Sundays. I mean, to be honest with you, for a lot of people, it's the only time they can come to the library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were, we were reluctant to go to, say, a half-day Saturday. The, the, the choice in that area, because one of the things that we offered is we have kept the hours in January and February to date on the old basis until we kind of had a sense of where this was going to play itself out. Uh, we could continue to operate that way, but my concern, and this is my personal and I think was confirmed by other uh, members of the trustees, we would end up having to literally close the library anywhere from three potentially to four weeks in entirety. I think that's unconscionable. You cannot do that to, you know, no, the no, citizens no of Savannah. You just but what you're, what you're trying to do is spread that out mm -hmm. yes. in a logical right. way yes. In, yes. based upon mm -hmm. usage. Yes. And, and I think and that's... consistent hours as possible, too. Yeah. The other thing, let me just add, July is our busiest month out of the whole year. Shows you what I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, uh, you know, I've been here for a long time, and it's really shifted uh, quite a bit. Um, but with all the summer programming on and, and people have more time to come to the library and so forth. I'll just give you an observation. Busy. I think just the, the usage. Uh, my wife and I came down to the library to, they had a high school teens program in the chase room that started, uh, art program. Last Sunday. Yeah. Last Sunday. And I came in the back door of the library and I says, I'm waiting for it to open at two o'clock. And I looked to the front desk people. I says, you know, the number of people that were standing outside the door waiting to get in. And, you know, it is immigrant population. I was just amazed at who was standing outside the door to get in. I said, okay, that's not normally something that I would do. And it was just serendipitous to be there and see it. And it was very encouraging. Just a um, question for Robert and a, a comment related to the, the shifting of the electrical costs and why it might make sense. but. Just um, the, the library is charged basically the same electric rate as any other. Not, there's not a special Madison government rate, is there? They're 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 paying they're paying the same amount. <coughs> Pardon me. There is there is no uh, there is no rate for that. I, I have I have not had a discussion with anyone, but I was thinking along those lines. Okay. So so, so the reason I asked that is, and this as I'm thinking through my head, my head starts spinning, but. As we know, the electric utility is, is a great asset to Madison, and it spins off money. And right now, it's we're in a catch-up phase because of the, the great increase in wholesale. But in other times, it spins off quite a bit of money to offset uh, taxes. So what we're doing is we're charging the library and other borough entities the rate, taking a chunk of that rate to help offset taxes, but we're using that chunk to help Run the, <laughs> so it's a little vicious circle. Yes. So there is a justification to shift it or change change the rates are being the, charged. Yeah. The cost accountant in me would say, keep the meter running so you know how much it costs to right. run no, the building. I, I, don't, I don't think we're, I, I certainly would not take a meter away. I wouldn't. Yeah, that's a. We appreciate your candor. <laughs> Good to no. see. You got to keep that the numbers hat on there. Yeah, the meter's no. got to stay there. But I think I think this warrants some more looking at and a, uh, a better understanding, a better system.